All right, Shannon Vlogs, 31 Days of Horror with special day three title of <gasps> Children of the Gord. Children of the Gord. Ah. <laughs> hey everyone, it is Shannon. I'm really excited because I'm sharing, I'm doing a sort of a series special this year and I'm going to be watching the series or as much as I can of the Children of the Corn series. Although I gotta say like this one, the first one came out in the 80s, 1984 and all the rest were way way later and I think they were mostly, I don't know, I'll get to those when I get to those but I don't know how connected they are. I've only watched the first one so far. Um, so Children of the Corn, this is sort of, I, guess, I don't, I guess I would say a bit of a cult classic and it's based on a C Stephen King story. It stars Linda Hamilton and um, <laughs> and Peter Horton. Uh, Linda Hamilton, of course, from Terminator. And this actually came out the same year as Terminator, which is really hard to believe that, but it's true. Peter Horton is actually, he's from 30-something, and I always confuse him, like, to me, when, like, he looks so much like Michael Bay that I sort of see them as the same person sometimes. It's kind of funny. Um, anyway, um, if you're not familiar with Children of the Corn and you like late 70s or 80s horror, just watch this movie. Don't even watch this video. Just go and watch the movie because you'll really like it. Um, it it's, and I had seen it before, so this is technically a rewatch, but I don't remember it, like, at all at all at all um with the actually at all i don't remember anything about it there was not one moment i thought yeah i've seen that before but i must i've seen this movie i know i've seen this movie. there's no way i haven't seen this movie but it, i can't actually remember watching it but i would have watched it it was so a movie i would have watched i would have gotten it rented it from the video store all that jazz so oh the basic premise of this story is that a young couple uh is driving through like you know farmland uh there's an incident and they have to go into this small town that is sort of overrun by uh children that are that are really uh and there's only children and they all there is a leader who's also a kid and they all follow the the leader so <laughs> I won't say too much of that because one of the actual real joys of watching the movie was that I didn't remember the story at all. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So it was really kind of cool. It was also really weird to see that there is a style of sort of Stephen King ad adapted works um, like a la The Dead Zone or that, oh, what was that vampire one with the, with the airplane? I didn't like that one. But anyway, like, it had, like, there's this sort of, it almost, now it feels like sort of made for TV type movies, the very sort of roughed edge acting, and the dialogue is very, like, just direct and stuff like that. So that was kind of funny, um, because I didn't notice it, and I certainly didn't notice it at the time, because it was just normal. That's what, like, horror movies were like, right? So, but now it feels like I can see it as a style. Um, so my questions that I have for this are, what, the first one is this a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, it is a horror movie. There's terrifying ideas, there's lots of violence, there's lots of blood, uh, and it is really creepy. The tension's high, which is really impressive because one of the weird things about this movie is that it's mostly set during the day, which is always unnerving for horror movies, especially around this time where, like, you know, it was, it was unusual for that to be the case most bad things happen at night. So how could bad things happen not only during the day, but when there's only kids around? Like, it's totally creepy. <laughs> um, and what's the next one? Was it scary? I, I don't think I would go as far as scary, just maybe because it's during the day. And that sort of goes back on what I just said, but it still feels like the truth. I wouldn't say that it's menacing and there is great tension, but it probably wasn't scary because, you know, it's an older movie. I remember, you know, generally what the plot was and stuff like that. So I have a sense of what was happening. And so that for me, that makes it harder for it to actually be scary. But it was definitely menacing. It was, it was, there was lots of terror uh, there. And, and I, at the time, well, I don't know how much they have sort of like evil kids is kind of like a theme. Ah, were they evil? That's a question in and of itself. Um, you know, but that kind of, like, people you don't see as a threat being a threat is definitely a great theme 
in horror. Um, and did I like it? Hell yeah! It was a lot of fun. Uh, it's definitely a cult classic. I really enjoyed getting an opportunity to watch it again, and I'm really glad that I've chosen the series for my sort of series special for this year. Although I have a feeling it will probably be the best of the bunch. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. You know, uh, and and even at that, it does have this sort of cult movie, B movie type quality to it, and it, you know. And that's just one of those things, especially just, I just, like, when I try and compare it, and I shouldn't compare it to Terminator, because, you know, I shouldn't, but they both have Linda, Han Linda, ha Linda Hamilton, both released in 1984, so, you know, it just feels like, wow. But that being said, you know, this one, the tension, the effects, okay, no, the effects I'll leave to later, the, uh, a lot of these, a lot of the violence and stuff and the creepy factor is very high um, and the editing was good. Now the effects, I think I have to leave the effects, the effects to the spoiler zone, but the effects, there are some that were, whoa, <laughs> very, very 80s. So overall, I gave Children on the Corn 8 out of 10 and I, because I enjoyed it, that's my rating for, I enjoyed it, I'm glad I watched it you know, I consider this, you know, a good movie, but more so that I enjoyed it. Um, and that's really the case with this one. And yeah, okay, so if you haven't watched Children of the Corn and Plan 2, let's cap off now, and we'll see you in my next video. If you have watched it, let's go to the spoiler zone. Spoiler zone! Three, two, one. Oh my god. Mostly, I just have to say, that the effect at the end of the the dragon and the fire in the sky had me howling had me howling like it really looks like someone just painted on the film and they probably did i don't know they probably did so that was really really funny and it just looked horrible uh but it made me laugh and actually several times during the movie i laughed there was a great interaction with peter horton and the young girl that helps them and it just like he he has hurt himself and he, she's just like helping him with cleaning it and stuff like that and it's just this weird funny scene where it's like it just seems like just a normal moment that seems so distanced from everything else that was really weird and um yeah I just and there were several times that I laughed. There was, oh, I meant to mention in the earlier bit that the guy who plays Isaac, who's the the leader of the evil kids, who, who leads, he's evil, and he leads the kids to kill everyone and stuff. There's an amazing scene between him and Malachi where they just really go at it. And it's like, whoa, this is some really amazing acting in the middle of a movie that the acting hasn't been that great. So there you go. Um, I also found it weird, again, like with one of the other... Uh, movies I've watched, I had a hard time figuring out whether it had a supernatural element or not. Actually, maybe not. There was a dragon of fire that came from the side, so that ticks off the supernatural or fantasy box. So, or, or whatever, like, evil religion type thing. But, like, there was just, just a weird thing that, like, every time they would go here or go there, th there'd be, like, corn. Like, it's like, all of a sudden, their car had all this corn in it. It's like, how did that happen? So I guess it's supernatural, because corn just starts to be everywhere. I'm not hugely a fan of, like, evil deity type worshipping type films, but this one was a lot of fun, and it feels kind of weird to say that. So I hope some of the other ones hold up. Uh, it, as I said, not sure that they'll be great, but I'm gonna try. Well, I'm gonna watch them, and I don't see how far, how many I get. There's a lot. There's, like, six sequels. I... <laughs> I didn't even know there was more than one until I started doing some research. So, anyway, Children of the Corn, I enjoyed it. Have you watched it? Planning on watching it again? Have you seen any of the sequels? Are they worth watching? I don't know if I want to know the answer to that. <laughs> oh, all right, thanks so much for watching.